Welcome to another edition of the Seat Shop installation video series. In this episode, we're going to be walking you through how to replace a driver bottom and top uh, leather seat cover on any 2000 through 2004 Ford Mustang. Um, this happens to be a GT. Um, Brian's going to show you some of the tools here we're going to use today. All right, nothing too crazy. Uh, a couple screwdrivers, got a flathead and a Phillips. We've got two Torx bits. Uh, you need a T25 and a T45, I believe it is. Yeah, T25 and T45 Torx. Uh, you'll need a 10 mil, uh, a 13. And uh, when you're pulling the bolts out of the, to pull the seat out of the, out of the vehicle, it's either going to be a 15 or an 18. I believe it's a 15. I can't remember which one it was, but uh, 15 or 18 should get the bolts from the floorboard. Uh, we got a regular Phillips drive for our drill, uh, hog ring pliers, uh, some hog rings, uh, a pair of snips, a uh, razor blade, and a, a pair of scissors. Uh, now, your cover will come with, uh, with new hog rings. Uh, we have pliers available for six bucks. If you uh, want to get a set of those, I'd, I'd recommend it. It's a real pain. Uh, put them on without the hog ring pliers. Uh, we also got a little marking tool to make some marks for some parts where we got to do some, some cutting on the, uh, on the cover. Uh, that's it. We'll move those over here and we'll go and start pulling the sucker apart. First, we need Phillips first. Yep. All right, and so there's going to be a couple trim panels on the side of the seat. Um, we always like to get it on a workbench. This, this is basically impossible to do in the vehicle because you have to drop uh, the electric track and separate the bottom and top. Um, but the trim panel here that houses the hinge, there's going to be two Phillips screws. There's going to be one here, and then there's also going to be one at the back. So you want to take those out first. When you're pulling the seat out of the car, uh, you'll have to move the seat all the way back, get the front two bolts. Move the seat all the way forward to be able to get your rear two. Uh, once you got that, go ahead and center the seat all the kind of back in the center point in the middle. And you may want to try to raise it up as tall as it can go uh, towards the ceiling. It gives you a little more clearance to get to all your bolts underneath. Uh, but do that before you undo your uh, power con your power connection underneath the underneath the seat uh, from the full board up. Uh, make sure you adjust the seat back to the center, otherwise it starts flopping all over all over the place. And it's real annoying. So make sure you center it back up and raise it all the way up before you uh, disconnect your power. Yep. Uh, next is going to be this little, it's a small plastic trim piece, uh, real thin. There's going to be two Phillips on that as well, one at the back, one at the front. Take those out. Back one. Front one may be tucked up un underneath the cover or foam. You can just lift it up and you'll see it sitting right there. Flathead. Yeah. And on the side too, there's going to be a switch for the lumbar. That's what runs the lumbar in the top. Um, it, ha it, it has a little plastic housing that, that um, goes over the switch. That you just want to take off. You can get a flathead behind it, usually at the front or the back. I wouldn't pry at the middle since, since the two catches are on either side. So I'm going to get to the front here. There we go. Okay. Yep. Control. These are Phillips as well uh, for the electrical panels. Now there's uh, wires running from the back of that control switch into the middle of the frame. Uh, once we drop the motors and everything off, we'll be able to get to that connection to be able to disconnect it pretty easy. But go ahead and pull your screws out. screws and we'll just let that hang for now. Perfect. All right, bring that back. There's your 10 mil. Yep. All right, there's four 10 millimeter bolts all around each four corners that are going to drop the frame off. Uh, just get in there with uh, this is when it really helps having the seat centered because it's a lot easier to get some of the bolts. We're going to get to these here, take these off. This frame's pretty heavy, um, so when you know when you're getting the last one off, make sure you got a hand on it for it to fall on you because it's pretty heavy. And sometimes, depending on where you leave the seat track, you may not you may not be able to get to them all with a socket. Um, so you can use a little 10 millimeter open ended wrench or a little ratcheting wrench too. Um, if you need to get to those, this one's going to be a tight squeeze, but we can get it. Bottom 
No, the top one. Oh, oh, it's the cylinder? Yeah, there we okay. go. Now there is going to be one um, quick connect switch right here um, underneath. Let me see if we can get a good shot of that. And that's a quick connect so you can get you a little flathead. I got the frame here. For me. Okay. And there's going to be just one catch on the top. So. There you go. And then we can get, um, might as well pull this, this one off now. There's another quick connect that goes to the front. Um, there's two catches on it. There's one on either side. And so what I do is I, is I get on one side and just kind of pry it to get it loose. While I'm holding that out to make sure it doesn't click back in, go ahead and get the other side here. There we go. There we go. All right. Go ahead and feed this to the frame, set it to the side. And now we'll separate bottom and top. We need our now 13. Now we need our Torx. Uh, oh, on that side, yeah. One side's got a Torx. The other side has two 13 mil. This is going to be your T45 uh, to get to this bolt uh, on the side here. Now you're going to have this bolt. You're also going to have your connection for your lumbar. So there's a tube that runs up that pumps up your lumbar in the back. So once you do this, you'll need to uh, disconnect your, your lumbar. It'll just simply pull apart. We'll show you here once we get this opened up and get some separation here. <laughs> And then on this side, here, got the two 13s. Pull those. Okay. All right. Now, here's our connection we were talking about earlier. We're just grabbing the top part and I'm going to pull it off. There we go. So just a simple connection like that. Just push together. All right. And set these to the side. We're going to show you how this headrest assembly works. Um, we're going to pull this one out. We already have a frame, um, an identical frame already disassembled. It's going, to be, it's going to be key in showing you how to get the headrest out. Otherwise, you won't be able to get the top cover off. All right. All right. And the plastic sleeve should be under here. Yeah. Let's see that and get a flat head around there, too. Okay. There we go. Okay. Perfect. All right, so this, this plastic sleeve, it, it runs the trim, so, and, and we'll have to cut, make a cut for this later in the new cover. Um, it goes in the top, but this, this plastic, you know, that way you can cut it and uh, the Here's trim it covers it. The yeah. top, slide right down, you'll see that on yours. Well, the headrest won't come completely out without releasing the clip on the inside of the frame, which you've got to take the cover off to get to. So this will be a little bit easier view to see what you're yeah. looking for underneath the cover. All right, we're going to go ahead and lock in this headrest. All right, there we go. So when you first go to pull up the headrest, it's going to hit a catch. You're not right there. You're not going to be able to pull it out anymore. Um, there's a metal, um, just a metal flap right here that that bends. Well, it doesn't bend, but we need to pry it up a little bit in order to release the headrest. Um, it's a little more difficult with the cover, but here's exactly what you're going to see when you get inside. Uh, when you start taking off the top. So your foam, you'll uh, go ahead and pull your cover up, you'll start turning it inside out, rolling it up, uh, and then you'll have your foam cushions going to be on there, you have to lift up underneath the foam and get your flat head in to uh, get to this clip to lift it up so you can release the headrest off. So, yeah, this bottom one here. Start work. Yeah, there, there we, we go. go. All right. Perfect. And that just pulls out. Now you're also going to have to get this guide rail out to you, this sleeve here. It has a little catch right here at the bottom, a little hook. So that you just have to, you'll have to just kind of pinch that in, and then while pulling up to get that sleeve to come out. Now with that clear, you're good. You can get your screws for your uh, seat belt uh, feed right there. So with those to the side, we're good. So now we'll go, we'll do undo it on the cover so you can see actually what you're going to do. But this kind of gives you a better picture of what you're looking for when you got all the foam and everything on there because it's a little harder to see when it's all covered up. There it is. You want to lock that in? Yep. Here's the catch on the headrest at that. Uh, clip hooks into. All right. There we go. There you go. So that's locked in. It'll stop here and you can't get to these screws that hold the seat belt, um, the little ring that holds the seat belt up there on top of the seat. Um, we'll get to the J clip now. That's the first step we're going to have to do. Um, there's another flathead under you. Okay. There we go. All right. And these, these 
or this one long clip, um, it interlocks. It grabs um, two basically J clips that interlock together and it has a little catch in there. Um, so if you just get on one side of the plastic and start pulling it off. Now these can be a pain too and, and it does help to have uh, two hands, especially to put it back on. Okay. If you can hold that, I'll I may hold be able to. Yeah. Okay. Once you got started, if you had someone else that can put a, you know, hold the screwdriver there so it doesn't reclip. There we go. Anyway. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that's undone. Now I'll get in, uh, get the hand inside too. And there's Velcro on these seam lines, and then there's going to be hog rings here. So we can do the Velcro now, just so we can start unrolling the cover. When you're uh, pulling the Velcro up, you don't want to just yank it apart because it's been on there for 10, 15 years, and a lot of times it's it's so hard to pull the Velcro apart from each other that a lot of times you'll wind up actually ripping the Velcro strip off of the foam. So push down on the prickly part of the Velcro, which is part of the foam, push down on it while pulling up on the uh, the Velcro that's on the cover to try to separate it. Because if you just try to rip the cover, a lot more times than, than, than not, it's going to rip the Velcro off of the foam. If it does come off the foam, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, get some spray adhesive, get a can of 3M. You can get it at Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, just a spray adhesive and uh, spray, uh, just just want to glue those down, let them make sure they set up real good and they've dried and hardened up real, real tight before you put the new cover back on because it's going to it's gonna have pressure on it when you re-velcro them down. So we'll start separating these up. There we go. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to start turning the cover inside out basically. Start on one end and we'll just we'll roll. Flip it here, and if you want to work, that's up. Oh, I got one more. Um, the knob right here that, that lets you enter the back seat, um, that also needs to come off, obviously, to get the top. You want to lay um, it down flat? Is it easier to yeah, pry it off? Yeah, All right, this, there's a catch. Um, it's, it's just a metal stud or a metal post in there, and then there's on the plastic, there's a couple catches. So um, it's not that tricky, but I just get a flathead in there to where you can um, see where the plastic starts. And I just start lifting up and prying on the back, front and back, actually. There we go. And so the catch is up here, and it locks in um, this little hook right there. So if you just work it back and forth from either side, you should be able to get it off. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now we're just going to start one roll and try to turn it inside out, basically. We'll start rolling it down. Okay. Now you're going to roll all the way down until you get to that first horizontal seam that's got the hog ring strip. So you take your snips. There's going to be three hog rings across here. You're going to snip these. Okay, clears out of the way. And you're going to pull all the way. Yep. And if you end up with any of the, well, which you will, when you cut the hog rings, you'll end up with these little shards. Make sure you get them off the work surface because when you put your new leather back on, you don't want to make a cut in it. Okay. All right, pull Keep up a little bit more up. until it stops. Okay, now we're to the point where the headrest is in the way. We'll flip this over to the back, and we'll go through <clears throat> popping that headrest off. Yep. And the foam, the back side of the foam right here has a little J-clip. That just holds it down tight, so we got to take that off. There we go. Okay. okay, now flip it back over to the front so we can access the... There we go. There we go. And you can just lift... With that clip undone, you can just lift up the foam. There, there's probably going to be some plastic in here. Um, I can't get a real great shot here. Right there. Right there. there we go. So you'll see that's where the headrest is. There's the catch that we gotta, we gotta make sure we undo. And, and with my hand in here, I'm gonna actually get it to lock on that. There you go. Right there. Yep. And then here, if you want to work it, yeah, you work it here. I'll hold the foam and I'll try to. Get, there we go. There we go. I'll try to get the cover. Okay. I gotta Big lift it. That. Yep. Okay, there okay. we go. Clear? Yep. All right, that's out. Now, second, we'll have to get the uh, plastic guide out here that's got that little stump. We're going to pinch it in while he's pulling from the top there. there here we go. go. That slides out. All right, perfect. Now, that's clear. Now, that allows to get the access to the screws to take the uh, seatbelt guide off. So, we'll go ahead and Kind of flip where you can flip it here. Yeah, I need that uh, the T20. T20, okay. 25, yeah. 25, that's right. Here's that. And here's where that, that Torx, Torx bit is. There's um, two screws on the top that are going to be your T25. 
Go ahead and take those two out. It's real tight in here with the drill. There we go. Okay. Right there's one. Right there's the other. Okay. And with that, the cover will just pop off. Now, another thing, once you got your cover off, uh, you really want to address any kind of issues you have with the foam. Um, one really good way to, to work with the foam is uh, and kind of help bring it back to life is you can steam it. If you have a, just a regular household garment steamer, uh, anything like that, uh, you can take that and just, uh, we want to get it right up close to it and just steam it. You'll see it really kind of puff and swell out. We got a couple other videos on YouTube that show uh, steaming and how it, you can see it really kind of pop up. Uh, let it dry out real well once you've done that. If you've got a compressor, blow you know, a bunch of air on it, dry it out. Let it, let it harden back up, uh, but it makes a big difference to really puff it back up. If you got any parts where the foam's tore up, you can add extra foam and glue it in, some spray, spray adhesive to, to patch some stuff up. Typically, your top's going to be in good shape. Usually, the bottom's where you're going to have the most problem. Most bottoms need to be replaced anyway, but uh, steam out your top it makes a big difference. Just to the side and grab the bottom. Okay. All right. Now, this... Bottom cover is held on with these just four simple clips on the underneath. Just take your flathead and pop all these four pieces off. And then we'll start flipping the cover inside out and we'll work on the top area where it's attached down. So that. Okay, now we're going to flip this over. You don't want to just yank the cover off. Just like the top, was, there's uh, this anchored on here with, with uh, hog rings and then, across, or, and then Velcro across the middle. This one's kind of reversed from the, from the top. But just grab a corner and just start to roll it up. You don't want to rip it off. Get all four corners loose first until you get to the stage here. All right, now with it kind of flipped in, uh, inside out, we'll take the snips and we'll go down and we're going to cut these. Get all the little pieces out of the way. These are sharp. <laughs> okay. That's clear. Now the same thing with the middle. Roll that off slowly. We don't want to yank it off because we don't want to rip the Velcro off the foam. Is it? We got that set aside. We're going to come back over with the new letter. All right, now we're going to install the new cover onto the foam. Uh, this foam is actually in pretty decent shape. Um, typically, you're going to find on the Mustangs that the, these two bolsters here, mainly where you slide it out, there's a metal rod that's part of the frame that comes up through here. Uh, which is going to cause a seat to wear out quite a bit. So if you if your seat is and pretty your foam is pretty beat up and pretty mashed down here, uh, there is new foam available. You can get a new foam cushion as well. This one's not that bad, but I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how to do the full replacement using a new foam. Um, so this what actually holds the foam to the frame is the seat cover itself. So when the seat covers off, this thing will lift right up off your frame. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this piece up, set it to the side. Here's the little metal frames I was talking about that eat up through. Those are kind of hard on the seat. So here's a new foam. There's little pockets on each side for those to go into, and there's some new flaps. Let's take these flaps. You want to run these down, down in the each each of the cracks here. It just kind of gives us more support for the that metal frame not to poke through. So we're gonna lay this down straight on it. So there we go. That's all that. There is to that, that's what holds everything on. So now we're gonna get the cover, stick it on. This one uses a combination of hog rings and Velcro. So you got hog rings running down here. You also have Velcro here. Now there's two different style seats they have. We've, we've come across them both ways. Sometimes there's a, uh, a just a fabric loop that's sewn all the way down this side here that runs along for here and here where they're gonna hog ring. Sometimes when you're taking yours apart, you might find this metal bar. This metal bar will feed through that loop and then it'll hog ring through this onto the uh, onto your foam. Some of them have these fabric strips with a plastic crimped on the end for a regular hog ring strip. 
when we sew our coverage, we're going to put this on there. So either way, whether you have the metal or not, this thing will work. If you have the metal ones, just you throw those to the side. You're not going to need these anymore. This one will, is sufficient to hold it down other than the metal. So this will kind of hit both, both ways. No matter which way you got it, this will work. So first, I'm going to hit my, I'm going to line this up and get the Velcro first. So I'm going to fold that in half. Line it up, make sure it's even from left to right on those hog ring strips down. And we're going to go ahead and push down and set the Velcro in there first. Okay, now we'll fold over and we'll get the hog ring pliers out. Hog ring pliers are a real, real nice tool to have when you're doing the install. Without hog ring pliers, it's going to be a real pain. We got them available, they're six bucks if you need a set. Um, they're on the website when you're checking it out, you can add those to the cart. So basically, a hog ring just you bend it and ha bend it, and it turns into a little triangle. It bends it closed, so that's all it is. But it's going to be real difficult to do without hog ring pliers. So we're going to go and ring these on. Okay, now the cover's all attached, sit tight to the centers. We're going to roll all the corners down now. So, I'm going to start to either the front right or left, either one. I kind of take my fingers and I put them on this, along the seam line here. And then I'm pushing out with my hand towards the corner and kind of pulling the cover in to make sure it's kind of stretching it over tight there. And then I'm going to roll my hand over. There we go. Yep. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay. And we'll just kind of work our way back. You can come up underneath. You can push the foam to the center of the seat. Pull the cover down. Because you really want your, your seam to kind of sit right on the top edge of, the, of that there. So you want to... You can Tuck that over. These will roll over now. There's going to be one little slit you'll need to bake on the back. We've already made this this cut, but let me show you what you'll need to do. On the back here, there's a part for the frame where the seat top comes and bolts back through to it. So this will pull over. And what you do is when you cut the slit, you don't want to cut the slit right on the on the top when it's pulled over, and you see where the slit where the piece of metal is that's going to thread back through. You want to make a mark, to, you know, about an inch below it because it's going to tuck in behind it and go all the way down. So you don't, that way it sits there. If you made the cut up here, it wouldn't, it'd look weird. It's going to, you'll have a bunch of excess stuff. So you want to make your slit way below where the metal post is. So your slit needs to be kind of down here, not at the top. So pull it all the way down. With the, when this isn't cut, I come all the way to the bottom. I make my trim line here. I can kind of feel where the top of it is. Make a, a little line with that. Take your razor blade or scissors. Make you a slit. So then, when you're putting it on, this will tuck all the way down. Okay, we're gonna flip this over. Make sure you wipe off your surface area. Make sure there's nothing sharp on there because you don't want to flip this over and scratch up the new cover. So we're gonna go and clip all the pieces now. This rolls over. Clip on there. Go from the back. There's also one other piece I'll make sure I feed through here. There's a, the lumbar piece. Just make sure this little knob comes up through too. There you go. I always like to have whatever clip I'm attaching away from me where I can pull it towards me. It's a lot easier to have this butted up against you. You can grab here and you can pull and you can roll and pull to get those things to clip because they're going to be tight. 
There we go. You've got a lot more leverage if you can pull towards your body. And if it's real tight, you can compress the foam down. It gives you a little more slack, too. Now this side's got a, the uh, button for your lumbar. We're going to close this. And we're going to go ahead and hook this on. We'll come back and we're going to make a line to know where to make our trim cut for that. Okay, now that's clip. You have a little marker here. This is a little chalk pin, grease pin. And we'll make a line. That where that button is. You don't want to cut a big cut, you want to do a little oval, either a slit or a little bit of the oval, and flat in, pull this back off. Okay, razor blade. See, you may cut a little piece, a little slip there, a little slip there, a little slip there, and there. All right, that should give us enough room for clearance. If we need to cut some more, when we actually get the hook and the button on, we will. Okay, so that's there. We're going to pull this around. Yep, we'll trim a little bit more off of there. I always tell people it's like a haircut. You can always cut a little more, but you can't put it back. So cut as little as possible, and if you need to cut more, you can keep making little bead trim cuts. Your side panel piece is going to go back on. Still need to trim a little more towards the ends. Let's see if this will set back on. Make sure the button's pushed all the way back up through the hole. snaps to that now that's on now we're gonna make our trim cuts for the front to hook on the control module here so there's a oval piece in this frame you can feel the hole only thing that has to go through that hole is our power cable okay so you don't need to cut a huge chunk just cut you a slit for your power cable to run through that that hole so Make my mark. There we go. 
You got a lot of room for error on this one because you get a big plastic piece that covers a lot up. Okay, all right, that's its name. Let's feed the wire into the frame. Okay. Yeah. It's two screws. These are gonna be tricky to get to feed, but let me start it flat. All right, we got one threaded. Now let's get to the other side. connection there all right now we got the bottom on we'll go ahead and move to the top and start putting this thing back together all right when you're recovering the top it's nice to have it on the ground in front of you that way you can really work it down um, so I start with the cover inside out here um, but first a little trick for you um, I like to use a produce bag right here you can get it at any grocery store and what I'll do is I'll cut the sealed end off right there and then go ahead and unfold it So it's in a loop, then I'll cut that in so I just have a strip of plastic here. This really helps when you're re-putting on the cover. It helps you get it adjusted. It lets it slide on the foam a little bit. So I'll put those there. I'll just drape this over top here. All right, then we'll start with the cover inside out. I get, like to get both hands inside of it, put it. Get it here centered on the top as best you can. Um, you can always make little minor adjustments. But is what I'm looking for is I'm looking for these seam lines. Make sure that this seam line match, matches up with the indention from the seam before that's on the foam cushion. I'll push down and just start rolling it with my hands. We'll get, we'll get it down to this first, first seam right here where we need to attach the hog rings. So let's make sure that that, yeah, that's right on the bar. Get some hog rings. There should be three of them on this cover. There you go. And just keep working it down. We can attach the Velcro here in a second when we get it back up on the bench. It's going to work just fine. Now we're going to grab the workbench back and show you how to uh, clip the bottom J clip as well as make the cuts. All right, we're going to go ahead and set the Velcro now. 
So in here, I, I like to get my hand inside, just like when Brian was replacing the bottom inside the foam, and you can kind of push out to, to where these seam lines will match up with the edge of the foam. So I'll push it in there, and then work with your hand, pushing it down on the foam, and that Velcro should grab that instantly. You see how that, uh, you got all the definition out of there. We'll do the same thing to this side. And now's your time, if you see any bunches or wrinkles, now's your time to pull the Velcro off and reset it. All right. Then this big J clip here in the bottom. Sometimes you need uh, an extra hand to do it, but let's see if I can't do this one. I work with the flathead and it's going to be real tight. Just get one side started. There we go. Yes. Okay. There's it. All right. Let's spin it around, and we'll make the trim cuts, trim cuts here in the top. So here's that headrest sleeve and you'll just feel inside the seat top where that indention is. It's be right there. Just put a straight little cut. Doesn't have to be too much. It's the only part you really got to fit down in is this, this tip here. That's the only part. So you don't have to just make a slit. You don't have to cut out an oval or anything like that. Just a little slit will get it. find that little track it goes into. There we go. Okay. And it'll snap at the bottom. Yep. It'll clip in when you get all the way down. All right, next is the seat belt holder. Get your Torx bit, the T25. And you can kind of feel through the cover and uh, actually feel where those holes are. There's one right there. Should I just turn down? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Right there, I made a little cut. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And don't over tighten those because you don't want to break any of the plastic on there. All right, all right next we'll the piece. bottom. Yeah, like that. And here's that 45 on this bolt. There we go. All right, so first, the, uh, to, I'm bolting the top to the bottom. We're going to, the little spot that we had to make the little trim cut on for the frame to come through when we were doing the bottom, that's where the side is going to go through. It's going to be that Torx bit also. So you also have this black uh, tube that's coming up through. This is, uh, runs up for your, for your lumbar. So we need to make sure when we screw it in, it doesn't pinch anything in the, in the connection, we can connect the two back together here. So there we go. So these will simply just push together. It just goes right into the rubber fitting like that. It'll fit down on it. There we go. 
Okay, let's throw this to that, and we'll line this up. This is our Torx, it's gonna be that T45, and we're just gonna roll that in. Now when you're, when you're putting it up, a lot of times you may wanna take a rag or something you can put on the inside of where the frame is here so you don't nick anything in here. Uh, we've, we've cut them before, so a lot of times we'll drape it with, drape it with a, a rag there while you're moving around to get this thing set. So, uh, let's see. Flip it up here and screw in those two 13 millimeters. You don't have to cut a hole in the side of the vinyl on that side panel uh, for the bolt to go through. You can just take your impact with the pressure and, and you can just run it straight down. It'll it'll just break right through it. So you don't have, you don't have to try to line up the cuts or anything like that. Just you can kind of peek underneath yeah. it, see where the hole is, get pretty close, and then you can just just ram it on home. There it is. Don't tighten your first bolt real tight. Just get it threaded in pretty good. That way you can still make some adjustment to find the hole for the second second bolt. Once you get the first one tight, go back and snug up the first one. There it is. And come back to the first. There we go. Perfect. There's that. Now I'm going to put some of the trim piece. Now we're going to put the frame on. We'll get the trim at the end. Let's go ahead and... Set this on its back. Let me get the motor assembly out. Alright, here's two for that side. Side this to the back. Probably go ahead and connect this back power switch first before you get it all bolted down. There we go. Okay. I'll lift this up, hold it, and you run the top bolt. We'll hang it from the top down. That's on, but we may need to get in there with the ratchet side. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's on. Let's, we just thread this, get the bottom to yeah. get that ratchet. Let's right, see if we can get that on there. Hold this frame. See if that uh, will that drive come up to that. Let's see. Disconnect and put the extension on afterwards. Yeah, there we go. All right, perfect. All right, get those yeah. plastic trim panels on the side. Oh, first, we can get that little knob that. Where the recline, not the recline, but the uh, flip forward lever is, um, you'll see it poking through the top. It's it's not going to cut it or anything, but you can just take a little razor blade and cut you about about a three quarter inch or an inch line on there, just enough for that lever to move. Push it through there. Get this. Push back there. There we go. Bring this clips. And these two sides. Got the Phillips. Let's see if we can get that on. There we go. There's that if you need it. Okay.
turn this down before I break it. This nice yeah. side one here that covers up the hinge. The headrest back on. Our matching headrest. Yeah. <laughs> we had a graphite frame, but uh, here we go. That's it. Now you're all ready to go. We'll go take this back out and bolt it back in the car. Thanks for checking out this installation video from the seat shop. If you have any questions about these seat covers or any replacement leather seat covers for your vehicle, please feel free to give us a call at 214 710 2565 or visit our website at www.theseatshop.com.